The Spoons, everybody. Hi, my name is Sue Hulsether, and I'm here in my living room in Wisconsin, ready to share with you my steps for how to play the spoons. There are eight simple steps that will help you learn how to play the spoons. Here we go. Step one, ask permission. You know, it's not necessary, but it actually is very nice if you ask the other humans that live in your household with you for permission before you grab something out of the kitchen and start whacking on it. So I always say, step one is to politely ask permission. Hey mom, can I play the spoons? Sure, hun. Yay. Step two, you take two spoons and you put them in your writing hand. Okay, whatever hand you write with is the best hand. What kind of spoons should you use? Well, I have two soup spoons. You can see these spoons don't even match each other, but they're the same height as each other and so they work really great. You also could choose a regular size spoon. You can see that these teaspoons are a little shorter than my soup spoons. They work, you could use that. You also could use two plastic spoons to do the spoons. It works, in my opinion, it doesn't sound as great, but plastic spoons will work. The only kind of spoons you do not wanna use are the stirring kind. I would not use any wooden stirring spoons. They don't work. And I certainly wouldn't try it with measuring spoons, but two metal spoons from your kitchen will do just fine. No. 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 These spoons! So they're in your writing hand. That's step two. Here's step three. Take those spoons and put them back to back in your writing hand, okay? And you just wanna hold them in your fist like a baby would hold a rattle. Step four, you take your other hand, which is your not writing hand, and you make a little bowl with it. Put the spoons in the bowl and the bowl magically goes around the spoons to hold them. To review, step one, ask permission. Step two, use your writing hand. Step three, put the spoons back to back. And step four, use your not writing hand to make a little bowl. Great, now we're ready to go on to step five, which is a little more challenging. Step five is the grip. To do the grip, you're gonna take your pointer finger of your writing hand and point three directions. You're gonna point away from yourself and down and towards yourself. From the side, it looks like this, away, down and towards. When I have pointed my finger towards my belly button, I can look down and see my thumbnail. I can also see my pointer finger pointing right at my belly button, and then I take my other fingers and just put them on the bottom side of the spoons and I squeeze, but I hang on with my bowl. At this moment, you're gonna to wanna to let go of the bowl and whack on your leg right away to see what you can do, but I suggest to just hang on for a little bit. It's very, very uninteresting, but it does help your hand get used to holding the spoons. When you can stand it no longer, take the bowl off the spoons and see what you get. The goal is to have the spoons stand nice and straight above each other, but what they usually wanna do is they wanna slip. Sometimes they even fall on the floor. So just take that bowl and put it back and grip it a little bit more. Once your bowl hand thinks that your gripping hand is ready, your bowl hand lets go. And if you can have the spoons stay right on top of each other without slipping, you're ready to go on to the next step, step six, which is try and adjust. So I'm gonna try them on my leg and make any adjustments that I need. Here I go. Seems like they're a little tight. So I'm gonna put the bowl back on and move my hands to another part of the spoons. Another part of the handle, I just slid my hand out right there. And let go again and try again. Oh, that sounds, that sounds pretty nice. Let me see if I can move my hand a little more. What if I put my hand way out to the outer edge of the spoon handle? Just what I thought, that's a little too loose. So I'm gonna put the bowl back on and move my hand back to that center place where they sounded the best. What you want is, a nice sound from your spoons and they're not slipping. If your spoons are slipping at this point, you stay on this step or go back to the step before. But try, try, try again, you'll eventually get it. It won't take you five hours, it won't take you five days, but it might take you more than five minutes. 
So once you can get a nice sound with your spoons, you have two more steps and they're very, very easy. Step seven, take your writing hand and, or sorry, take your not writing hand and turn it into a ceiling. So it's not a bowl anymore, it's a ceiling. And put that ceiling right above the spoons and let the spoons hit the ceiling. You'll notice that my ceiling hand is not moving very much. It actually wants to help. And, and if it helps, it hurts. Watch. Yeah, it doesn't sound as good either. So I want to take this bowl hand and make it into a nice ceiling that doesn't move very much. The last step is the best step of all. Make music. I'm going to put a song in my head and try to make the spoons match the song in my head. I'll even sing it for you so you can hear what's going on. Usually I start with a song I know really well, like for example, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Here I go. just like that. Let's do a little review. I wrote all the steps on a piece of paper. Here they are. Step one, ask permission. Step two, use your writing hand. Step three, put the spoons back to back. Step four, with your not writing hand, make a little bowl. Step five, the grip. You take your writing hand, your pointer finger, and you point away, down, and towards. Step six, Try and adjust and try some more and adjust some more. Step seven, you take your bowl hand and you make a ceiling. Step eight, put a song in your head and make the spoons match the song to make music. That, my friends, is Sue's eight steps for simple spoon playing. Here we are, one more time, a little bit of spoons from me, then it's your turn. Good luck.